Well, I don't know if there's numbers that I can put around it, but I simply find it very strange that they can't decide their own immigration policy. And I think this is one of the major structural flaws in the EU. Um, this is the major point of frustration when you speak with people not only in Britain, but in Holland and France and Italy, is the strain that immigration is putting on their social uh, security, be it trying to get a doctor's appointment or social housing. And so that's one aspect. But longer term, I have to also think that being alone would make them a little pull up their britches, you know, stand on their own two feet. It's a little like when Singapore left Malaysia back in 1965. Of course, I wasn't alive. I don't know if you were either, so I don't remember it. But I think that Singapore came out of that obviously in a better place than if it had stayed in. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, kind of kind of apples to oranges here, but uh, yeah, I hear what you're saying. On this whole issue of uh, immigration, though, I mean, it's kind of odd, though, because uh, one of the pillars of the EU, is, of course, is Schengen, right? Open borders, which, uh, and there is, uh, they've sort of op managed to negotiate and opt out from there, yet they still have to take direction from Brussels in terms of immigration. It's kind of odd, right? Correct. So, uh, you know, I think this is the major flaw in the uh, EU as it stands now, is that people from the countries like uh, Bulgaria or Poland can go to places like Britain and immediately qualify for all of the same social security benefits that the British can. And, uh, and, and, and I think it is the, the major sore point among voters. So even if they vote to remain, which I believe they will, uh, it doesn't mean that the European construct is in the clear. I think this issue will be uh, continue to fester. So, as Owen and I were talking about this, you know, let's say the vote is to remain. The people who want, the Brexiteers, the people who want to leave, they're not going anywhere. They're still going to be in the UK, and they're probably going to be even more cheesed off, right? So this becomes a festering political uh, issue. Is that going to be reflected in, uh, in asset markets, do you think? Well, I think the initial reaction would be a positive one. Of course, we're already seeing the beginning of it over uh, since Monday. The markets are rallying, and I believe they will continue to rally on uh, Remain vote. Now, let me just say, Martin, that nobody knows I could be wrong. Maybe they're going to vote to leave, in which case I'd see about a 10 percent correction in the FTSE and, and possibly even uh, global markets, too. But I think the FTSE in Europe uh, would go down about 10 percent. Uh, now, I'm only putting a 30 percent chance on them leaving. So let's say 70 percent remain. Then I think you see a continuation of this bounce well into next week, another let's call it between 5 to 10 percent increase in world markets. And the S&P, I believe, would go to a new high.